Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Bale Theater of the Arts um, for tonight's program. My name is Grant Knox, and I am the Director of Bands and Orchestras here at Seneca High School. And I'm proud to welcome you all to our end of year showcase entitled What the World Needs Now, Empowerment, Expression, and Empathy. This program will feature um, some of our best and brightest student leaders um, who have stepped forward to the challenge of taking on the artistic slash musical direction of this program. And I'm super excited to share their talents in the art of composition as well as conducting with you all tonight. Tonight's program is being live streamed by Mr. Nick Irvin and our wonderful Bobcat TV club. So I'd like to ask at this moment that you all please take out your cell phones and all electronic devices and silence those please so that we can have a distraction-free environment for everyone here in the audience, as well as all of you all watching at home. If you so wish, if you are not able to secure a physical copy of our program, we do have um, QR codes available out in the lobby for you to scan the program, and again, see the repertoire that will be played tonight, as well as some of the awesome um, musical direction of the program. Before we get started tonight, I'd like to take a second to acknowledge a few entities in helping make our uh, concert tonight happen, as well as their continuous support of the fine arts programs at Cienega High School. First and foremost is Ms. Kim Middleton, as well as Ms. Bernard Torres, um, the two administrators who um, oversee our fine arts programs at Cienega, um, and all their support uh, overall, just in each of the endeavors that we partake in, each of our ensembles their full support emotionally as well as financially. So if we could please give them a round of applause. I'd also like to thank my wonderful fine arts colleagues, Mr. Jeremy Vega, Ms. Ruth Latova, and Ms. Jessica Armistead um, for their awesome support and collaboration throughout the school year on fine arts programs. So if we could please give them a round of applause as well. And then, as I mentioned before, Mr. Nick Irvin always does a great job with our Bobcat TV live stream. I'd also like to take a moment to thank our wonderful staff and student helpers at the Vail Theater here um, for all of their help in making this such a beautiful concert experience. So if we could please give them a round of applause. And then last but certainly not least, my favorite part is all of you all, the families, the friends, all of you all who support these wonderful musicians in their music education endeavors. Um, I say it many times, and each time I say it, it, it has just such more weight in the fact that these are multi-talented students, academics, musicians, um, athletes, and all the like. And so the fact that you all prioritize music education in their lives means a great deal to me as well as them. So if we could return the favor and give our families and friends a round of applause, please. So the best part about this being a student-led concert is minimal talking from me and great talking from our wonderful students. So I'd like to turn it over to our concert band. Our first musical director of the concert band is Miss Allie Akers, and she will be conducting and leading a piece called Portrait of a Clown by Frank Tickelly. Now something that I want to uh, shed light on before we uh, turn it over to Allie is the fact that Walgreens is currently doing a um, philanthropic event um, that they do annually, and this is actually the first time they've done it since the pandemic has begun two years ago, um, and it's called the World Red Nose Day. And if you guys have been to Walgreens in the last month or so, you may see at their checkout counter that they um, have a bunch of red noses available for sale, um, and it is a great cause, and that it goes to foundations who support ending child poverty. So I thought it was fitting, they did not pay me to make this promo, um, but I thought it was fitting that we're doing a piece called Portrait of a Clown, so I thought I'd channel my best clown spirit for this one. <laughs>
evening. My name is Raiden Ralston, and this is our wonderful concert band. And about the end of this year's third quarter, when Mr. Knox said, I want the students to decide what we play next quarter, my brain lit up. And I got some ideas, and then when he said it could be composed or arranged or chosen, I got even more excited. And then he said it was allowed to be from anything we wanted, movie, video game, whatever you wanted. And that got me really excited. So I, my, ma my mind raced to find the perfect thing to play. I went through about five different pieces, and with each one, my brain thought, I don't think we can play that fast. And so I finally found one that I thought would be suitable, fun, and granted, I think a lot of people would find to enjoy. And so here it is, from the video game series Uncharted, composed and written originally by Greg Edmondson and arranged by me, this is Nathan Drake's theme 2.0.
All right. As we're changing sets, check, check, test, 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 check, check, test. Uh, oh, okay. My peer actually. Um, all right. As we're changing sets for our symphonic band, um, I wanted to mention a few things, give you guys a bit more context about um, this wonderful concert that our students have helped uh, prepare, um, as well as some end of year events that you all should be aware of. So tomorrow, um, we are hosting our first ever end of year um, screening. So this will be a year in review type of event where each of our ensembles will kind of have their moment on the big screen up at the Galaxy Theaters in Tucson, right off of Howell. So if you've not gotten your tickets yet, there's still a limited number available. So you can check our website, cianigaimp.com, or you can check our social media pages, Facebook, or Instagram for RSVP information. We're having RSVPs done through Eventbrite, so if you're not familiar with it, it's a wonderful platform for um, ticketing and all of those things. So free, tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. If you're not doing anything, bring the family out to the Galaxy Theaters and spend the night in the movie theater for free, checking out some of the highlights of this awesome academic year. Now I will say, concession prices are still normal, so bring a good $50 if you're <laughs> a small pop, right? Um, <laughs> so that is our first year event that would be this week. Um, and then Friday, we will hold our end of year award ceremony um, over at Cienega High School in the Student Union. Um, all are welcome, um, not really a capacity for that, but we do ask that you all RSVP through the same platform event. So once again, all of that information can be found on our website, on our social media pages. It can also be found on um, your all's program if you look on um, one of the pages in there. can't remember off the top of my head. Okay? So check that out. We'd love to see all of you all there to support our musicians as we celebrate this wonderful academic year. Um, it's been a phenomenal year coming back from the pandemic. So um, excited to celebrate these student musicians, celebrate our seniors, and look back on what's been a phenomenal year. Now, as the symphonic band is coming out, I'd like to talk a little bit about the artistic direction of this concert. Um, so you also got a taste of it with our concert band, um, student composition, student conducting. And really the mindset here was not only to shed light on some of the many talents of our students, but also to target some of those um, pesky standards, musical standards in Arizona and national standards that um, often escape us. Um, so we understand that these, uh, what we do in band class is a performing art, it's a performing ensemble. But that's not the only thing that we should target in our standards. That's not the only thing your student musicians are learning in this class. So something else that we inspire is composition, the art of creating music and arranging music, um, hearing music and being able to understand what's going on based off of the oral perception, the sonic perception of what's going on. So we inspire student composition and while not, it's not every student's cup of tea, we do have students who have ventured well into that. And we'll see a little bit more of that with our symphonic band. We also encourage leadership and collaboration. And that's been the most rewarding thing about this student-led concert, um, is that it's inspired some healthy collaboration. Um, and I mentioned this kind of last week with our orchestra, um, in that these students are really a family um, for all the goods and, and some of the not so goods. And so uh, some days we've spent rehearsal um, going back and forth, your four, four patterns off. No, like your story measure 62. Um, and it inspires such a healthy spirit of um, understanding, empathy, um, empowering each other to make musical decisions together and not from one person. So the podium kind of decentralizing the power of the podium and allowing these students to collaborate in the art that they're making. And so it's been a really rewarding experience. And finally, something that's been rewarding with this is um, we are going to get to um, take part in uh, the regional premiere of a piece that we joined the consortium of. A consortium is a big word for a group of patrons who are contributing um, either financially or uh, some other way of support to create a new piece of art. And this is something that's been done as long as um, civilization has been um, normal with the arts. Um, but this was something that we got to do back in 2020, was join a consortium with a bunch of schools from all over the country um, in support of a composer who wrote a new piece of music. And this is a piece that we're going to 
end our concert with. And so again, this was done back in 2020, but because of the pandemic, we were never able to give it its full flowers. So this performance has, this uh, piece has been performed, but we got access to it before it was published as a part of being members of the consortium. And we also get rights to call this a premiere in and of itself. And so this is a super, super special event that we're going to have the joint um, groups in on. And it's a piece that really kind of encapsulates all the themes that I mentioned prior to this of empowerment, empathy, and expression all through the medium of love and music. So we're going to bring the symphonic band back out and you're going to get to hear a little bit more um, from student leadership, um, some awesome repertoire, and um, we're going to continue this wonderful program. Thank you. My name is Kyle Jones, and today I'm excited to present with you today my newest piece, Blood Moon Waltz. Throughout the piece, you'll hear heavy Baroque influence mixed with some modern musical conventions of today. And this way, you're able to enjoy some of these archaic ideas from the past in a more present, new, today um, point of view. Uh, I hope you enjoy my new, newest and latest piece, Blood Moon Waltz, after we get a pitch.
Okay, as we are resetting for the finale, um, I'd like to take a moment to recognize um, a few of our students um, in a spotlight as this is our end of year concert. And for quite a large majority of this group, this is their very last high school band performance, band and orchestra, I should say. So I'd like to start by recognizing our musical directors, our artistic directors for tonight in order. Miss Allie Akers. Mr. Sam Constantine. Mr. Ray Walston. Mr. Kyle Jones. Ms. Casey Borders. And Mr. Ethan Turner. super hard. They chose um, their pieces for the most part, um, and they got direction from myself in the conducting perspective, um, but a lot of it was them placing their musical interpretation, um, and it was a wonderful exercise for me to kind of step back and let them be them. Um, so there are many times where I suggested that I might not agree with their musical interpretation, but it doesn't matter because I'm not the one on the podium. So it's a wonderful exercise in interpretation, um, in autonomy, and all of the like. Also, a few of them got to um, experience direction from Dr. Chad Nicholson, the director of bands at the University of Arizona. So he came out to Vail um, and visited our student and gave them kind of a mini conducting lesson. That was a really special experience. So let's give them one more round of applause, please. Great job, fantastic job. You guys have a lot to be proud of, thank you. So next, I'd like to take a moment to recognize all of our graduating members who are performing tonight. And this is a long list, so please bear with me. And you guys can go ahead, give them their flowers, give them their claps with each one. They deserve it after four long years, actually after 12 long years of grueling grade school, um, they have finally reached one of their first of many um, kind of capstone moments um, and have a lot to celebrate over these next few weeks. So I'm excited to kick off the celebration this week with them. So first up is Parker Bell. Great things about 
uh, these musicians um, taking on a challenge of the pandemic, but also a new band slash orchestra director um, and learning each other, kind of creating synergy with them. Um, but when I tell you, I was so excited for this year, knowing the energy that they brought to the table last year, knowing the students who maybe took a break last year and decided to return and took a, a leap of faith and trusting me um, in developing their musicianship. Um, we've had such a blast. Like, I truly, truly am going to miss um, this batch of seniors. So let's give them one more round of applause. For this. tonight. Um, this has been such a special program from our perspective and I hope it's been that way for you all as well. So we are going to conclude with the uh, regional slash consortium premiere of um, Harrison Collins's To Right Our Wrong. I'd like to remind you guys once more about our year in screening, um, year in review screening next or tomorrow, I should say tomorrow night um, at the Galaxy Theaters up in Tucson off of Houghton and then our end of year award ceremony on Friday at 6.30 p.m. at Cienega High School. I'd like to encourage you guys to stay connected with our program um, through our website, as well as our social media pages, Facebook and Instagram, um, as well as the school sanction um, pages of Schoology and Power School. Thank you all so much for your support, and here it is, I hope you all enjoy To Right Our Wrongs by Harrison Collins.